Hey Church, hope you are well. It's um, it's been a while since I've had a chance to to uh, upload one of these house to house videos, and I've been on vacation for a few weeks. It's been um, it's been a good vacation, although wasn't a whole lot I could do other than be home. I've got pretty much everything done on my honeydew list, which has never happened. Uh, a lot of time to do those things, but I'm eager to be back. Uh, with you. Um, I'm actually up here right now in um, in Tahoe at Zephyr Point, a place that many of you know well, and I'm spending a few days up here doing some sermon planning for the, the coming weeks. I'm going to be preaching um, a four-week series on race and justice starting this Sunday, and would really covet your prayers as I reflect about what God's Word has to teach us in in these days when among all the things we're experiencing is, is um, the racial unrest and injustice that we are, um, it's been a part of our nation's history for so long, but is is now uh, right in front of us. And so really would cover your prayers as I prepare for that. Um, today's readings, if you had a chance, uh, Proverbs 8, really, really fantastic to be going through Proverbs. Um, and then we're starting back at the beginning of the Psalms. Uh, psalm 1 was our reading today from the Psalms. And uh, Psalm 1 is a psalm that in some ways sets the tone for the, the rest of the 150 Psalms. Um, begins with this, this stark contrast. Uh, the psalm is saying, The blessed is the man or the woman who, who doesn't go the way of the wicked, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, or whose delight, whose love is in God's Word, who meditates on what God says, and or God is teaching um, beautiful image there of then of that person being like a tree that's planted next to streams of water whose roots go deep and whose trunk is solid and enduring and whose leaves uh, provide shelter in the, in the in the summer I couldn't help but think of those there's those I think they're oak trees at, uh, on pocket road right near Greenhaven they've been there for I don't know hundreds of years and they're just massive and they you just know they're Part of the reason is that because they're so near the river and the water table and they've just been soaking it up for so many decades. Um, what a beautiful image of the person who seeks God's word and delights in God's word contrasted with the wicked uh, that the text says, not so the wicked who are like chaff. You couldn't think of a, of a more stark contrast, chaff being that. You know, the grain that is when you throw up in the air, the chaff just blows away in the wind. It's nothing, especially compared to a, a massive oak tree um, and this is a contrast that is is set up here in the psalm but carried through all through scripture I, th I thought immediately of Matthew chapter 7 where Jesus ends the Sermon on the Mount with a with a very similar stark contrast between two people who build houses on two very different foundations one on the foundation of of rock and the other on a foundation of sand and, and in the same exact way Jesus says the difference between these two people is is what they do with God's Word Jesus says the one who builds his or her life on a foundation of, of stone of rock is the one who not only hears my words but puts them into practice who delights in not just hearing God's Word but in in, in conforming one's life to God's Word um, I would just tell you that uh, as one of your pastors, my one of my deepest prayers for all of our church is that we would be a people who delight in God's Word, that we are seeking after it uh, in the same way a hungry person seeks after bread. Um, I've said before that if, if you were given the choice, I don't know how this would happen, but given the choice between uh, coming to, to be in worship and hearing me preach once a week or being in God's Word every day of the week. And you had to, for some reason, had to choose between those two. It wouldn't, in a second, I'd say, don't hear me preach, just be in God's Word every day. Thankfully, you can do both. Uh, but I, I just really would continue to encourage you to, to seek time to be delighting in God's Word and to let it shape you in the ways the Scripture says that it will. There's a foundation, a rootedness, a, a security there that comes as we allow God's Word to, to transform us into people who represent His character. Um, so I really would encourage you, if another chance to kind of start fresh with the Psalms here and begin to pray through them and read through them every day. Um, it's, it's such a, a rich experience. Um, so wherever you are uh, today, um, I pray that you are um, encouraged and that you know the love of the Father, God our Father, and the grace of Christ in your life and the fellowship and the, the presence of the Spirit. Uh, peace.